our faith must be in Jesus Christ. He is the one that enables us to walk by faith in victory. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So without being born again, you have no right. You don't have access to this. But if you're born again, because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I can walk in victory even through my faith. So everything in the kingdom of God, my friend, works by faith. All right, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5, just to uh, refresh our memory. Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. Are you born of God? I said, are you born of God? So the Bible declares that if you are born of God, you are destined and designed to overcome the world. The world cannot overcome you. You are supposed to overcome the world. You're not supposed to give in to temptation. You're supposed to overcome temptation. Hallelujah. You know, so many of us have fallen into temptation of all kinds of evil stuff. We call ourselves Christians, but we live a life of duplicity. You know, sometimes we have illicit relationships, immoral relationships. Sometimes we get into all kinds of evil practices. Sometimes we associate and we agree with people that do evil. That's not overcoming. That's succumbing. Come on, amen? That's not overcoming. You're giving into this. But God did not want us to succumb, but he wanted to overcome. So he says, pray that you enter not into temptation. Are you with me, everybody? See, that means Jesus was being tempted because the hour had come for him to die on the cross. He knew that. And yet, his flesh was recoiling. That's why he said, Let's go to the Garden of Gethsemane. And what did he do? He said, he started praying. How do I know it's a temptation? Because he said, Lord, if it is possible, is there another way that I don't have to go this way? All right? So, but not my will, your will be done. But he kept praying until the time he was strengthened inside, said, okay, I'm ready now. And the, and the angels came and strengthened him. So when there is a temptation, don't try to spend time with your friends. Don't try to spend time with, uh, you know, watching television. When, when you know there's a temptation coming, you better get on your knees and go before the Lord and pray. Hallelujah. And while you're praying, don't imagine what will happen in the temptation. Because that's not prayer. All right? I'm talking especially about illicit relationships. I don't know why I'm talking about this. There might be somebody here that's battling with it. And I'm not judging you. I'm trying to help you. Get out of it. You were, not, you, you were not created to succumb. You were born again to overcome. Amen. Come on. You can't live that life. You're married. You, you better stick faithful to your wife. You better stick faithful to your husband. Don't look aside. You are not God, you know. Oh, but people say, but pastor, you know what? I wish I was in the day of David. <laughs> or I wish I was in the days of Solomon. The Bible says it was not so from the beginning. It was not so from the beginning. In the beginning, it was Adam and Eve only. That was God's plan. God didn't give Adam, Eve, and few others. Amen? He said, one is enough. Because I want you to become one. Come on, amen? I want you to become one. Now, don't look outside of this. Don't anything that is outside of the Word of God or the limitations of the parameters that the Bible describe, uh, prescribes is not meant for you and I. Come on. I don't care what the scientists say. I don't care what the experts say. I don't care what the influencers say. Influencers are not your gods. Come on. We have only one God, and his name is Jesus, and he's given us one word, and it's called the Bible. If it doesn't agree with it, we're not for it. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So, say, I'm an overcomer. I'm say it again. I'm say it in a way you believe yourself. I'm one more time. I'm you are designed to be an overcomer, yeah. and you're destined to be an overcomer. But just because I'm designed and destined doesn't mean it will automatically happen. All right? We have to take part in it. We have to take responsibility. And we have to work so that we have to work our way through it. So that we can experience the overcoming reality in life. Okay. So he says, 
He that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. How can you live the life of an overcomer? By faith. Shout by faith. By faith. So I got to learn what this is. I got to know what this is. It's not simply because I say I'm an overcomer, I become an overcomer. I have to learn how to walk by faith so I can live the overcoming life. Hallelujah. Nothing, nothing could stop the progress of the children of Israel from Egypt to the land of promise. The desert could not stop them. The Red Sea could not stop them, right? The, the, the you know, um, the, 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 the wild animals in the, in the wilderness could not stop them. Nothing could stop them. Jericho could not stop them. Jordan could not stop them. Because the man that was leading them was a man of faith. That means that's why the Bible says, he, to him that believeth. Now listen, but all things are possible. That Don't misuse that. Understand, we have, God has designed a path for me in life. And as I'm walking on the path, if there is any obstacle, I can uproot it. By the power of God and by my faith. Amen. It's not... God's word is not supposed to be used only to fulfill your desires. If the desires are outside the will of God, it may not be beneficial for you. In fact, it may distract you and take you away from what God wanted for you to be experiencing in life. Remember, I shared, I think, last, last week or the week before, I said in Psalm 139, everything has already been recorded and written in the book about you. That means God has designed me not only to be victorious, not only to be an overcomer, but he has designed every step of my life. The, am I talking about fate? No. People think, well, it's already written, so what can I do? No. God has given us, he has designed something, put it in a book for us, but now he gives us the responsibility to discover that. But he will not control us from and stop us from taking decisions that will deviate and take us away from what is already written in the book. That's why people fall into sin and do things and get into trouble. So God is not trying to restrict you. God has given you the freedom, but he has, because he knows the end from the beginning about each one of us. He has designed something. Now, this is where prayer plays such an important role. As I submit to God, prayer is not just for asking. Prayer is for submission. Prayer is for yielding to God and letting him speak into my life and say, this is what I want you to do, Raj. This is the way I want you to go. This is what I want you to make of your life. I want you to take this step. So in prayer, I discover my destiny. Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So young man, young woman, as you pursue your education, as you're studying, and you might have dreams about your life as to what you want to become and what you should become, submit that to God. Submit it to God. Because you don't know what God has designed you for. Because if you're on his path, no matter what that is, you will always end up at the top and not at the bottom. Because he has already destined us to be the top and not the bottom. He's already destined us to be the head and not the tail. But that is only when I'm walking according to what has been revealed about me or what has been designed about me in his, according to his will. Say amen. amen. Are you in agreement? Yes, amen. So we are overcomers. Let's continue to read. Okay. <clears throat> The victory that overcometh the world is even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? So we have to have first, our faith must be in Jesus Christ. He is the one that enables us to walk by faith in victory. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So without being born again, you have no right. You don't have access to this. But if you're born again, because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I can walk in victory even through my faith. So everything in the kingdom of God, my friend, works by faith. Everything in the kingdom of God is possessed by faith. Victory is established through faith. So we read a few scriptures the other day in Hebrews 11, 29 to 34. And I don't want to spend too much time on that, but we read about, we talked about how they passed through the Red Sea. 
and uh, how the walls of Jericho fell down and how Rahab did not perish. And what shall I say more about Barak, Gideon, Samson, Jephthah, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Hallelujah. All these are impossible tasks that were achieved through faith. Hallelujah. Are you with me? All by faith. Say amen. amen. Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, cut out of weakness were made strong, wax valiant in fight, turn to flight the armies of aliens. You must, see, to walk in faith, you must keep hearing faith. To walk in faith, you must keep hearing faith. Faith must be a constant daily diet. That means it's not only hearing a message, it's also meditation. So one of the words, or one of the, uh, yeah, well, the word meditation can also mean muttering. So what am I supposed, I'm supposed to mutter the word so that I got to hear the word for myself. Meditation is not just going silent. There are times for that as well. But meditating the word is you take a scripture. Let's say, by his stripes I was healed. Or you take a scripture where it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. Or some scripture, and you, you speak it in a way that your ears can hear. That's why confession is so powerful. Confession is not just saying it once or twice. You are speaking it aloud. Look, there are two parts to confession that you have to understand. One is... The first part of confession is to plant the seed in your heart. Okay? Because how is the word sown? The sower soweth the word by speaking it. So the first aspect of confession is to speak the scripture or the promise. And by speaking it, what are you doing? You're sowing the seed. Are you with me, everybody? Now, you keep sowing it and you keep watering it by meditating that on that scripture. But as it grows, first the blade, right? As it grows, there is, an, there is a knowing that tr begins to rise inside. It's not mentally knowing, it's knowing on the inside. There is a level of confidence that begins to grow inside you. Now you come to the place where you declare it. So every declaration is not confession. Confession is not necessarily declaration. Is that clear? So just because I say, be thou removed and be thou cast into sea, it will not happen. Why? Because I've not sown the seed for it and built on it to come to the place where I can speak it. That's why he said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into sea and shall not doubt. Where am I building my faith? I'm building my faith which will dis discard and dispel doubt out of my heart. Now I speak to the mountain. Are you with me? So while you're, while you're working on healing in your body and you're saying, by his stripes I was healed. Thank you, Lord. You took my sick infirmities and you took my suffering away according to Isaiah 53 and according to Mark 8, 17. I thank you, Father. And I declare I am the healed of the Lord. The first time I say it, nothing may happen because what am I doing now? I'm feeding my spirit man with that seed that that seed may be planted and may begin to grow. Come on. Amen. But as I keep working on it through meditation and confession, faith will come to the point where I'm now ready to harvest it. Come on. I'm now ready. To, now, when that comes, you're not going to say, I was healed by his stripes. I was healed. See, no, there, see, watch this. I was healed by his stripes. I was healed by his stripes. I was healed by his stripes. And what am I doing? Planting, watering, meditating. But then comes the time, annoying. I was healed. There is no way I can be sick. That confidence comes. That's when the declaration is made. Come on. Amen. When the declaration is made, it goes forth with force to enforce what the word has said. Because now what has happened is what is, what is in the seed when planted, life is in that seed which looks dead.
But when it is planted, something happens in the soil that the soil breaks the seed and new life begins to rise. So when I'm planting the seed by saying the word over and over and over again and meditating, something happens where the seed breaks open, life begins to rise inside. Now it begins to grow and slowly, not immediately, but slowly, the confidence level begins to grow. Are you with me? Now, to the point where you say, there is no way this can happen to me. No, I can't be defeated. This cannot happen. And you're not saying it because you're mentally convinced. Mentally, you may be thinking, what is this? But and deep inside, you know that you know that you know. Have you understood what I said? So this is something which is very, very important. It is by faith. So you have to grow in your faith. And, and that, that's important. So what must I do? I must live in the atmosphere of faith. Don't spend time with doubters and expect to grow in faith. Don't sit along with people who scorn the word of God. That don't give prominence or importance to what the word of God says. They give you all the knowledge they have gained through YouTubers and Google who are ignorant. And we tend to believe them rather than what God said. I'm not getting a single amen on that. Am I telling you the truth? So we better get, in, get ourselves. We got to learn to protect our mind. Protect our heart that is not being influenced by influencers that are ungodly. That's why you can't listen to every preacher. Because some of the preachers are way off track. Some still today don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in praying in tongues. They, they're cessationists. They think everything ended with the apostles. I don't know where they got it from. But I believe in the Jesus who is alive today. As much as he was in, on that day. Amen. So don't listen to everybody. If, what, if you're listening to somebody, please listen very carefully. If you're listening to somebody on YouTube or television or something, not everybody that is on the television is a holy man. <laughs> All right? Not everybody is godly. So you have to be selective. That's why Jesus said, be careful. Take heed what you hear. 